Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Hey Ugandans, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson, and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Dig Talk. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch, participate, give your views, and ask questions on Alternative Dig Talk. Dig Talk, the way to go. As promised, we deliver. We are redefining the social media narrative, asking tough questions and holding your leaders accountable. We are non-partisan and break down having a conversation with Uganda. We are the mighty drive. We hold debates that give you viable solutions. We bring to you people that you've always wanted to listen to. We are gender sensitive and give space to the unheard voices. Not forgetting the quote of the day. We are live on our social media platforms, The Alternative Uganda on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter from Monday to Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. Don't miss the debate behind the wheels and studios. I am Edgar Matthew Karuhanga and Princess Louis Delidian. Expect in-depth analysis, credible, factual and authentic information. We are the Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues, real talk. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. A good evening to you, all our viewers. We welcome you once again. Yes, we understand and we are indeed in the time of the festivities. We hope. God has kept you wherever you are. God has blessed you with life. God has given you life. And we really appreciate God that you are still living. Uh, we want to appreciate you and we welcome you once again to the Diaspora Link. This is the program that handles the, the plight of all people, all Ugandans, all the people within the East African community that move out of the community and go and work abroad those members of the diaspora this is your program this is the program that talks about your issues it is the program that handles whatever bothers you whatever benefits you and whatever profits you wherever you are uh, today we are so much blessed that we are going to be handling yet another hot topic i want to appreciate whoever followed up the recent program Thank you. We saw the, the debate was continuous and it, it is really bearing fruits. I am your host, Nixon Segawa. We are yet again handling another very wonderful topic. And that is, is suspension of companies a solution to better externalization of labor? This is an industry. It is a virgin industry and a lot of people have come on board to help better and shape this industry. And we found it so crucial, we found it so important to be coming live to you with this topic as we look at whether suspending these companies is one of the solutions or it is the solution that will better the externalization of labor to improve the rights of all our brothers and sisters that are working abroad to improve the conditions under which these labor export companies are, are, are working. That, that's why we, we, are, we are looking at that topic today. 
Uh, in the studios today, we are privileged and we are going to be having a number of people that are going to be discussing this topic. And as I informed you earlier, you can also begin sharing with us your views over the topic. Uh, as we are going into the Christmas season, the Minister of, of Gender, Labor and Social Development uh, came out and she read out a list of 20 companies that were suspended. And these companies, uh, when we looked into the list, some of them had lost their license some time back, uh, but we know they are still listed and, uh, by, by the ministry. And there were some new companies that we are put on the list. And that's why we felt it so important, because it is really timely. Tulabye company nyingi, ezivudeyo, nezivanga zilu zinze licenses zabwe. Orensonga, ezenja ulo, ministry, zeyavayo, neenokolayo. Uh, and those companies were listed, and there are many. And within this very period, uh, I think on 27, uh, a, certain, a, certain company, uh, a certain company from Kenya, Competitive Manpower International, took government to court, to the constitutional court. Uh, this company, the directors are from Kenya. They took Uganda to court. They want an interpretation. They want a constitutional intervention because this company's license was suspended and they tried to renew their license and this was never done. And without, without getting into the demerits and the merits of the case, we shall be having our brother Moses Dalla, who is the CEO of this company. He's going to be speaking to us. We are going to be hosting him right now in the studios. And at this moment, I'm going to ask him to greet us and say hi to, to, to the viewers. Mr. Dalla, you are welcome. Yes, Mr. Moses, hope you are listening to us. Okay, as, as we connect him, as we connect him, I will request uh, Mr. Kayonde Abdallah, this, the Executive Director of Migrant Workers Voice. Let him also greet us and welcome us to this show. You are welcome. Yeah, our dear viewers, show again. Um, we are very grateful to see the Diaspora Link taking a lead in uplifting the voice of migrant workers, the voice of lives and uh, whatever concerns migrant workers. Thank you so much to the organizers and the owners of this media house. We really feel um, uh, grateful for this wonderful arrangement. And uh, thank you so much, Mr. Nixon, for always inviting me mm. to be part of this show. Yes, you're welcome. Mm. And uh, we really appreciate you for mm. the views that you keep sharing with the diaspora and the people within the country. Mm. Uh, you let me know if Mr. Moses is ready to, to greet us and also speak to us. You, you people in the machines, I request you that you let me know in case he is ready. Yes, Mr. Kayonde. Yes. As, as I have hi highlighted in the mm. start, mm. 20 companies we are listed. Mm. And these companies, according to the ministry, they are being, their license is being, they are being suspended on issues of human trafficking, mm. extortion, mm. forgery of documents. Mm. And uh, some of them they have been presenting job orders which are, are, are not factual. Mm. I think uh, as Migrant Workers Voice, these are the issues that you've been raising. You've been telling us about the syndicate within companies. Mm. And I, I hope you are smiling if the ministry comes up and uh, suspends these mm. companies. What is your take on that? You know, suspension within the ministry, uh, it is now becoming uh, a chronic disorder. Mm. To, to, their, to them, that wherever you complain, wherever migrant workers uh, complain in, in, in the Middle East or in Saudi Arabia, the anger is displaced instead onto the companies that took them. The ministry is right in one way mm. to anger displace 
this kind of anger to the companies they licensed. It's like when I tell you, Nixon, mm. that he, you are the one to, be, to take all the responsibilities or all the liabilities that I would have taken in, in a certain business. Mm. When you make a brand <laughs> mm. over these liabilities, or maybe you don't mention it well, or you don't act it well the way we expected, or I expected, then I feel like you are not qualifying to represent me. Mm. In other words, this clearly shows that uh, companies represent government in this kind of business. For what government would have provided mm. to the citizens of Uganda is being instead given to these companies to, to take part. I mean, to assist government to employ or to search uh, these jobs abroad to cater for these numbers who are unemployed here. Mm. In other words, the companies are assisting or assuming a government role. But yes. when government or the ministry gets to be overzealous, uh, wherever these uh, sent representatives or the licensed companies make a mistake, their master chooses to terminate or to cut off the heads. Mm. Yes, some of them have been dragged down completely, not to be even heard on the map again. Mm. You wonder mm. Mm. which kind of uh, uh, methodology are they using to, to iron out issues. If at all, any challenge that comes mm. within labor is going to be handled by curtailing or cutting completely, you know, uh, these breeding parts, you cut them off or you do amputation, then we are not going to remain with any system. Mr. Kayonde, you are, you are sounding mysterious. I thought you would be celebrating that the, the uh, ministry has, has heed to the cry of migrant workers. These companies are not doing whatever they are supposed to do. They are involved in forgery. Uh, they are involved in extortion. They are involved in human <laughs> trafficking. And you would be celebrating. As do you know why I'm smiling? Voice. I see a game of, uh, I don't know how to call it, but uh, uh, these guys are try, trying to play a hoodwink kind of game that he, they want to tell migrant workers, mm. we are really caring about you, you know? It is these guys who are taking you responsible for any of the suffering you are facing the other side. Even when... Isn't it the case? Uh, even when... Listen to me. Mm. I will come to that mm. case, mm. you know? Mm. Mm. Even when these companies, after uh, preparing this girl, doing whatever, whatever they do to prepare the girl and the ticket the girl out, the girl is sent in Saudi to start working. Ministry forgets that the girl is now in the hands of someone else mm. who can be questioned in a different jurisdiction. Now they're using a job broker, this man called a company. Mm. They slap him with all the responsibilities mm. that they would have taken while in Saudi Arabia. Mm. They say, we are going to arrest you, or we are going to, 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 to drag you down, suspend you, or attach anything to you because a girl has complained in Saudi Arabia, and you did not care. So we wonder, how do these people in Uganda begin to be responsible? Moreover, the people who represent the very workers in the contract, because when you follow up internally these mm. contracts, mm. Uh, and if you ask Mr. Adala, mm. they are not signed directly by the workers, these migrants. They are signed by the directors of these companies. Yes. The so-called representatives, the so-called brokers. They're the ones representing the migrant workers who are going to be raped in Saudi Arabia. So you ask yourself, when they are raping, are they raping Adara or are they raping this company called so and so? No. And mm. this director of a company is not in Saudi, is completely not actually responsible for whatever happens to a girl Oh, Mirembe Winnie, who is suffering in a certain country or in Saudi Arabia where they deployed her under a government by mm. Government has embassies in these countries. Which embassies are supposed to have attaches or workers attached to government that are under Ministry of Labor? Which help to monitor and supervise and be on ground administratively to communicate to the ministry? Mm. but not to represent workers' rights. Hello? You get my points? Mm, mm. Now, this is where they go wrong. Mm, mm, mm. When you ask the commissioner who clears these girls, for him, he assumes that Mr. Yassin at the embassy mm. <laughs> is now 
the representative of migrant workers. And okay. he is the only man, or oh, Mr. Ivan Kakama, the consular, mm. who lies in the consular department docket mm. that is supposed to go into cases mm. to bail out Ugandans that have been maybe accused of ABCD, but not to defend them, only to go and ask for amnesty or pre represent them um, uh, to ask for protection in case their rights are being, pro pro uh, being uh, violated. Uh, violated. So mm. the consular may not be the one to fight for our rights, but he comes in mm. to see where we are being uh, violated, and then he guides. Either he refers to a lawyer mm. or... He refers to the workers' communities to see how we stand up and seek redress. Mm -hmm. This kind of methodology I'm trying to explain helps workers to gain liberties, to, or to stand and be protected, and also bring justice. It brings the, the, the atrocities to light. Mm -hmm. That when you put a system in Saudi Arabia, a labor court in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. how can it work? By empowering the workers to always know how to keep the evidence, how to, to you know, to march to the labor courts okay. and present this. Then you slapping mm. all whatever that comes to this company that is in Uganda, so, which was not there when they are raping. Okay, okay, right. okay. Mm. Uh, we thank you, Mr. Abdallah. Okay. Uh, hopefully, Mr. Dalla is, is back with us. Uh, if so, this is the time that I would like him to, to come in. Hopefully, yes, yes, Mr. Moses, I thank you. I thank you for making off time. I would request you to, to say hi to our viewers and our listeners out there as, as you speak to, I, I hope you've heard what, what Mr. Abdallah was highlighting uh, when we are starting. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm called Moses Abdallah, the Director of Competitive Manpower International Limited. Uh, cut. Yes, Moses, you're welcome. Yes, Moses. Yes, you can hear me? Yes, right. Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, uh, actually, this is a, a very nice program. Uh, mm. I think we need to highlight on a few things so that um, we see where the problem is and uh, we see how uh, the government can uh, be in a position to address it. Especially like uh, the recruitment process in Uganda is uh, a new thing that uh, started in uh, actually after the invasion of Iraq. Yes, People yes. who understand recruitment in Uganda uh, actually just started to know about it when um, we were taking soldiers, actually ex-servicemen to Iraq. Mm. Yes, yes, you can go on. Yes, Moses, we, we, yeah. we, appre we yeah. appreciate the perspective in which you are putting this whole issue of externalization of labor in Uganda. Yes, then is uh, the, the, the suspension of uh, companies, the solution to the problems uh, happening to, to the migrant workers. I have an answer to say no, because at least uh, in Uganda, I've been in Uganda for, uh, from 2012, I've been uh, registered and operating a, a company. Then uh, maybe the dynamics of uh, how things are done uh, maybe it can be quite different from uh, what other countries are doing. That's what we need to address. Because uh, like competitive itself is now in six countries. We are in Kenya. We, were, we are in Uganda. But uh, currently we have a court case that is going on that uh, we sued the government. Then uh, we also in the UAE. We are in Ghana and uh, we are in Sierra Leone. Yes, yes. Uh, talking about the case that you've taken our government to court, can you speak to it without getting into the demerits and the merits of the case? Okay, uh, I would say I, I received um, 
Uh, my license, my actually my third license expired in 2017. Then uh, we kept on tossing one another at the Ministry of Labor. Uh, they tell me this when it reached 2018. They told me, you know, now you need to give us 51% of the shares. Then uh, I wrote it to the permanent secretary and I said, you know, uh, if you want 51% of the shares, then uh, we need to have it in writing. Then uh, um, uh, it was just a mere word that uh, the president had given directive, build Uganda, buy Uganda, build Uganda. Uganda. So the ministry took it as an advantage. So when uh, I realized nothing is ca coming up, uh, they called me and said, okay, Moses, here, we need 51% to, to be given to Uganda of our choice. Then when I heard of Uganda of our choice, I wrote to the permanent secretary, Minister of Labor, and I asked them, can you put this in writing? So they refused to put it in writing. The Mr. next Mr. thing Mr. Which I received... Just, yes. a moment, just a minute. Uh, sorry for interjecting. Do you mean to say the 51% was discretionary just to you? No, it's not a regulation? Actually, it was not a regulation. That's why actually, we are, I, uh, if it was a regulation, they would, uh, they would have put it in writing, but not verbally. Mm. So in, yeah. in, in the Ministry of, of Labor, are you pointing at... Uh, the commissioner, are you pointing at the minister? That dealing of the 51%, where did it arise and from who? Okay, uh, in my, when, when, when I was called to come to Uganda, it is the commissioner who called me and uh, I had a meeting with the commissioner, so I did not meet the minister. But uh, later on, uh, we, I had to meet the minister in Kenya. We discussed, he told me he's going to work on it, but uh, later on I think he was changed. And uh, that's how we ended up in court. Mm. Yes. So now the, the, continue to flow about the case. Okay, when, uh, when, 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 uh, when they told me and I, I resisted what I did, I, I wrote to the, Kenyan, uh, the, the Ugandan High Commissioner here in Nairobi uh they when they called them they said we moses is not following the diplomatic channel then uh, they said no there is no diplomatic channel what what happened next was um to write to my client in the u.s saying okay adala is is not legally supposed to do recruitment in in uganda so my my client had to terminate the contract that i was working on uh with the guards in 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 Afghanistan, when they terminated the, 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 my contract, I went now to the director. The director told me, no, uh, Moses, we are very sorry, but we are working on your issue. Well, then he, the, 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 next, the, the next week I received there was a termination letter for my license. When I, 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 I received the termination letter, then I took them to court. When they received the letter, uh, the letter from the court, they gave me a go ahead again to, to work, but uh, with no license. Now, after giving me the, uh, a go ahead to work without license, you know now they were using police to harass my staff in, uh, in the office. So I mm. decided, I said, no, I, I cannot work without a legal license. Then they mm. kept on tossing me, tossing me. Then I decided that no, we continue with the court process. When the court process reached, uh, they realized that they are going to lose. We went into and we had a consent, a consent agreement. After having a consent agreement, mm. they, they, they told me, okay, Moses, we are working on your things, but uh, the system is slow. So we dragged, dragged from January 2021 to August 2021 when, when the new regulation came in. When the new regulation came in, then they had it right to me, telling me that now, you see, Moses, you cannot work in Uganda because you're a foreigner, and uh, uh, you can only sit, you, you are full company to a Ugandan. That's how I ended up again to court into the constitutional court. So, 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 so that means the 51% no longer applies 
what is now required of you is to surrender your company totally to Ugandans for you to operate. Is yes. That... Yes, that's right. That uh, I give all my shares a hundred percent to Ugandan. That means that uh, I, I have to seize work in Uganda. And uh, I also had this that uh, since my company is registered in Kenya, mm. incorporated in Kenya and just registered in Uganda, that means that I have to seize Kenya and I have to seize Uganda. If I have to change the directors, I have to get Ugandans to run my company in Kenya and also run it in Uganda. You say that this is a violation of the Ugandan constitution and the East African market protocol. Very right. Mm. Actually, uh, to me, I view it as a, a way of frustrating some, uh, business in the East African community, which I don't think is right. And uh, we as East African people, I think uh, the word even uh, who a Ugandan is, it defines a Ugandan as somebody within the East African community. And uh, I feel that uh, I would have been considered as an East African person. But not saying that, okay, you, you see now you are, you are Kenyan, so you seize your company 100% uh, to Ugandan. And also it was done throughout of uh, a very big malice. Because they took my country director, now a person whom I had employed as a country director, and opened a company to her without knowing that I know how much this person is earning. I know the, the accommodation which is, this person was using is my, my, my company promise. And they mm. say, okay, this person is now owning a company. Mm -hmm. I understand the frustration. You, you also... Yeah. Talk about the 100 million bank guarantee. Is it also yes. illegal? Okay, the 100, uh, 100 bank guarantee is just a way to frustrate uh, the poor Ugandans who cannot afford the money to, to run a recruitment company. I would tell you for sure that uh, <coughs> before, be, 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 before this came in, in, pay, in 2015, the, the recruitment in Uganda was free. Then a few companies which were taking people to Iraq uh, realized that they have made money. They introduced their, the 50 million. Now, mm -hmm. after they have introduced the 50 million, they realized that maybe few people will come in, but they, thought, uh, they saw people coming in and coming more, 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 more companies are coming. By, by now, there are almost 250 companies in which are running in Uganda. So when they saw again that, okay, there are so many companies which are coming, how, how do we stop these companies from, from operating? Instead of saying, okay, uh, we put right measures that we can stop uh, the recruitment or the illegal recruitment or the mushrooming of companies, they, they decided just wake up and say, okay, we, ha we want... Uh, 100 million, which is not justifiable. We have people who can, uh, who are willing to venture into the recruitment business, but they don't have the 100 million. I, as Moses, maybe I am privileged. I can, even if they say 200 million, can afford it to, 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 to pay. But what about this person who is just a Ugandan who is start, just starting business? Can they also look at a way that? Uh, does not violate the, 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 the working, uh, the, the, the business relationship of Ugandan. Uh, choice to do business, to do any kind of business than putting up amount that is, which is extremely exorbitant. Then mm. you, they say you, you pay a hundred million. Mm. Then uh, from a hundred million, you have to pay uh, on each contract, you have to say $30. $30. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. And uh, what they say in the, uh, on recruitment, uh, recruitment of uh, a Ugandan, you, you, you have to, to a, a Ugandan has to pay 20,000, 20, which is less than even the $30,000. You wonder where, where do I get this $30 uh, job order when really uh, even a job seeker who is coming is paying, is paying me. 20,000. 20, Does it make uh, any sense? <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Uh, we shall get back to you.
Uh, thank you for, for really putting everything in perspective. And uh, we brought in that case because we understand these are the dynamics within the industry. As he had told you, this industry began when Ugandans began going to Iraq mm. some years back. Mm. And uh, Mr. Dalla is one of the people that jumped into Uganda from his homeland, Kenya, mm. and he began to do business here. And uh, he's, he's having over 250 workers that he has helped to go abroad. They are mm. in Afghanistan and they are working. Mm. We shall get back to him uh, to tell us how they are faring since he is suspended. Mm. But here in the studio, Mr. Abdallah, yes. you've heard, mm. uh, I know as migrant workers, you can't also keep a deaf ear to what is happening mm. uh, to the companies that you know, are recruiting. Yeah, because you are advocating for mm. people to go through companies. Exactly. And this is what is happening mm. to the companies. Mm. The yeah. companies are our good, good whatever the, in partners. terms of job pro providing. They yes. give us the jobs. Mm. Mm. So whatever we see them out crying mm. uh, and also raising what is uh, oppressing them, mm. we, we side up. You know, we feel like we should support them mm. to get what they deserve. Because mm. if they do not operate well, mm. we cannot afford even a single day mm. to accept working with traffickers. Mm. So mm. the ministry must watch this and do not go contrary. Mm. You know, like uh, yesterday I saw a lady in the news who mm. killed all the daughters. So sad. So you can imagine, you, 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 you go nine months down the road, you deliver children and then you cut them or you tie ropes and strangulate them. What are you up to? This is what the ministry is doing. Mm. You tell everyone to go through companies. Mm. But again, you go behind closed doors, you begin playing your games of earning. Mm. Because whatever you hear Mr. Dalla is saying, mm. it's like guys are in the ministry, the racket from the commissioner labor, Mr. Eguru Rollins. Have you heard his, his whatever position being mentioned? And I want to tell the president. Mm. Isn't it personal? Uh, uh, no, I, I, I want to open it. Whatever you are telling the yes. president, isn't it uh, uh, No, let a, let, this time around it is getting too much. Okay, let me tell the one in charge of public service okay. to check this man out. Otherwise, we are going to force him to resign for all the mess and the games he's playing behind. Wh which man are you talking of? I'm talking of the commissioner, Labor. Mm. The commissioner who clears, uh, I mean, labor externalization, mm. he's the one who clears these, of those of Adala mm. and the others. You've had him in the, in the game. We cannot blame the minister because these ministers are, are appointed, they come in and go. Last time we had uh, Frank Tumwebas. Mm. Now we have Among. Mm. Uh, they know little, you know, but a Guru Lawrence mm. is uh, like a doorpost in mm. the Ministry of Gender. Mm. He's ever there. And when you hear this antagonist, Mm. coming up, you wonder why is he not trying to see this and try to create to ease tensions. So his contract, his, his license is terminated because mm. he's a Kenyan and uh, uh, the new regulations ban him from taking it up. What is yes about that? Uh, I, I actually 99% support his argument. If you do not give me what you proposed to me. Mm. Then what do you want me to do? You want me to join the traffickers? Mm -hmm. Adala lies in the East African community, mm. right? Mm. Doesn't he have a right to, to trade? To do business. In yes. Uganda. Do you have a, a, can you quote for us in the protocol where you can discriminate him from doing business here? When you come up... Yes, the protocol, we are domesticating the protocol by putting up regulations. Okay, he has alleged being mm. coerced behind doors mm. to pay some money, you know, to take in his shares, 50%, 51%, whatever. Mm. He was being coerced. He's the one to prove that. But mm. this shows that even within the ministry, as you see many people out crying to get what should be right or what is laid on paper, there are people who are using what is laid on paper to earn. Mm. They use the powers of a pen, the instrument they have of power to be commissioners, mm. to direct anything and clear or commission anything. Mm. This is what is affecting Adala. Mm. However, Adala is right to seek redress in court. Okay. And I'm sure if he continues that way, many companies who have been covering up this ministry 
and it's whatever whatever guys who are working there they're going to, to begin now joining him mm. it mm. would be Uwera because i know adara is a member of it's Uwera member of the association yes. of recruiters mm. but where is where is Uwera you see kayonde advocating for an association mm. of migrant workers sensitizing and trying to to courage to give courage to the migrant workers to to get their liberties of collective bargaining mm -hmm. but i see adala is standing almost alone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to get justice to urge you out anything who are those guys that are supposed to stand with him to collectively bargain and get what is affecting adala i know it is not affecting adala alone it is affecting the other guys in bed with the ministry also mm -hmm. yes they are the guys mm -hmm. you know as he has told you the game behind, once you surrender your 50%, 51, 51 mm. he, you are part of, what can you talk? I have handled the worst cases in my office. Mm. And the director tells you, Mr. Abdallah, please forgive me. Don't take it far. Mm. You know, part of our directors, uh, you, know, you know, part of our what, you know, they are part of, you know, you know. Now, how will it look? Mm. This is why I, I want these guys in the ministry. Mm. We know you. Mm. Mm. We know what the games you are doing. So, so you have taken advantage of the, the, the sleepness of the Ugandans or people who may not know what, what you are doing mm. or maybe a little bit hating the mm. migration kind of. Mm. So you are earning from the ignorance of all the Ugandans. Okay. We are telling you and we are ready to face, to face whatever you may subject to us. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, you oppressing Adala mm. is something very wrong mm. that government should come up very quickly. The president should see this. The association of, of these recruiters, the job brokers, may mm. I name them, they are the job brokers, the Adalas, mm. should mm. also come out and support Adala because Adala has an issue mm. with the substance. So you are also supporting I support Mr. him. Adala. And maybe next week I'm also going to court. Hey. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 let, let's see. Mm. Uh, uh, we, we can meet there. Okay. Yes. So, Mr. Mr. Adala, you mm. you you you've had the support that you are receiving from the migrant workers' voice themselves. They are they are saying that they really need to rally behind you. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Adala, what happens to these people that you helped to go abroad now that you are suspended? If they are having issues, who is handling? Are you still following them up? Because as migrant workers, they have already been complaining about companies that only dump, uh, dump them wherever they go to work, and they simply leave them there. What have you been doing in, in your case, and what is the scenario now that your company was suspended? OK, my, my, my case was uh, a special case, because one, um, I was working with uh, uh, one of the 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 the, 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 the official of of, of of the minister of labour. Uh, we we were sharing the contract with them. They have uh, their company, and uh, I have their company. I have my company. The only challenge uh, the white man would not accept uh, agree with the with, with with their company because it had it had swindled people's money while they are in Iraq. Uh, mean, so when I mean... came in, they had no choice but uh, to accept me because uh, it was now that uh, Adala, you, you either accept Adala to work or Adala takes all of the, the contract. So we we were sharing 50-50. Then so when Mr. Our, Mr. They Mr. Adala, to, to... sorry for interjecting. You, you mean to say ministry was doing business and was getting contracts? Yes. Yes, the ministry, ministry officials were, uh, were were doing business, and uh, even the contract coming to to sign a contract, it mm. was signed in my presence in Nairobi. Hey. Okay. Yes. Let us go on with your then, with your case. We shall leave the officials yeah, yeah, alone. Yeah. So mm. when uh, when they swindled the money from the first contract, so mm. they slightly changed the company so that it can fit to have no case in the court so the ministry said he has continued enjoying 50 percent so the ministry itself wrote to my client and said okay listen adala is not having a license in it, uh, in the country so what they did was to to get what i was uh, the guards who, who whom i had in in afghanistan switched mm. to the other company which has uh, now been sentenced to 
to do recruitment. And oh. also maybe one, one, one of the companies, uh, they also gave some general. One of the general, they gave him 60, 60, 60 workers, then uh, the rest, because uh, the rest went to the other company. So, so the workers that you are taking care of are being taken care of by ministry officials who are running companies? Yes. Wow. It is so interesting that the regulators are, are the ones competing with the private sector. Uh, but we need, we need, we need your, your, your word on what should be done by companies to follow up. I know even, even in Kenya, you, you've, you've heard of, of girls crying out to companies that simply dump them wherever they take them, in, a, in, in, in Saudi Arabia, in Oman, in Jordan. You've heard of that outcry. In the industry, yes. what, what should be done to these companies? Okay, the, 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 most of the problem, you know, uh, like there is what they call a bank guarantee. Mm. Uh, if an is, is misbehaving and the people are mistreated outside there, the first mm. thing is, is to get money from the bank guarantee and repatriate this person. But uh, for Uganda case, it's different. Because uh, actually, when you look at uh, the number, I need to actually, uh, the uh, viewers, do an investigation. You will find that 90% uh, of the companies are either owned by generals or military people or government officials who are in the, within the Ministry of Labor. By Is that an investigation uh, that you took on yourself? B -b -b yes. Is that an investigation that you yourself took on and, and found out such? Okay, the, uh, the, the investigation is true. I, uh, it's something that I took off because when I came to Uganda, we were 17 companies. So it was so easy to know who owns this company, who owns the other company. When the companies have been growing, I've been part of the system. When uh, the formation of UERA, I was part of the, the, the I'm, I'm among the 12 founding members of UERA. So the whole system, I do understand it well. Mm -hmm. So the bank guarantee, despite being asked from companies, it is not helping to repatriate Ugandans that are suffering from abroad. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, it is, it is not. And, and why, why, why shouldn't it be helping? Okay, the reason why we put a bank guarantee is uh, to, to give protection of the Ugandans who are the other side that in the event they have issues and uh, the director claims not to have money, this money which is within the bank, the 50 million, it should be part of the money that should be used to repatriate the, 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 the person who is suffering from the other side. But also, we, we, should take, we should not blame uh, recruitment companies because uh, we do have more companies which are doing bogus business, which are not licensed, which are just doing human trafficking. And uh, how is this human trafficking being abated? Because some of the people who are, are doing it are very well connected to the government. So it doesn't need the, 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 to have a license to, 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 to take people abroad. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, that's where the, the, the challenge comes in. We would not say that uh, all these registered companies are the ones that are making people to suffer. No. Uh, that one, I, I don't think so. But uh, we need to check on the system mm -hmm. which is currently in place. Like uh, we have the Minister of Labor. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the internal security. Mm -hmm. We have the police. And we have the foreign affairs. Mm. Mm. Uh, they, actually, we would all blame uh, each company. Each of them have a, an issue to blame. Like foreign affairs, how would they allow somebody, like there is a gentleman called Yasin, a private business person to take care of the whole country's interest in Saudi Arabia? Why, why, why do the Yasin get $70 from recruitment companies? is just an individual which is not a government why can't they say okay this 70 dollars the recruitment companies are paying for each girl we increase the number of uh, attackers
to handle the issues of Saudi Arabia than getting money, give it to a private person who is just in business. Mr. Mr. Adala, the, the migrant yes. workers are saying that they are being left out in, in all these decisions. Where do you think migrant workers would be positioned? You are talking of a one-year scene, only a single man. Why, why don't you think uh, migrant workers would be empowered? Would that be also a solution to be following up their fellow migrant workers? Okay, if the migrant workers do have uh, a strong association, yes, <coughs> I would encourage that whatever happens, all the meetings which are happened that the Minister of Labor uh, meeting with whether they should be involved. Let them come out and say, you listen, we have these problems which are happening because uh, some of these problems, when you take them to the ministry, are always put under the cover. I would give you an example of one company which has been, every month you hear has been suspended, but it's still working. How does this company work? Why, why is it? Is five that times, how do you suspend the company five times? Is that a company that is on the list? Isn't that an allegation? Yes, one Mr. of the companies which is on the list has been suspended more than five times. Isn't that just putting uh, the, the, the migrant workers in, in jeopardy? Because uh, now maybe somebody is well connected to the government that there is nothing which you can do. You will, it will be in the papers, but uh, I continue exporting. Uh, mm. And the uh, subjecting Ugandans to unfair treatment outside there. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you all, all our viewers. Uh, I thank you for all of you that are commenting. I'm, I'm, I'm really receiving your good feedback. Uh, thank you, Alaisha Swaib. Uh, she's saying, but here, who is responsible for those who are taken by the suspended companies when even the government can't follow up those whom they cleared. And when the companies have been suspended, the government now needs to take and then follow the migrants, which it can't afford according to what we observe now. Okay, thank you, Elisha. Your comment has been really captured. Thank you all people that are really following and uh, this show. You can also join us by calling 0789 uh, 017 or you also call on 0759-132-310. Uh, I would request uh, uh, the person in the machine to also play us those suggestions. We had people that sent us their suggestions and what they would say about this topic. And as we promised them that their views shall be aired live in this program. Let us have their views and we hear what they are saying. Alaisha Nanya zina sinzi de Saudi Arabia. Kumulama guna gwemule so ogwa government okubange suspending a company zi ya wala isi nso lubede bedie. Neti kan, neba, ne kwa hana ogufuna nizi wa wandi wa do wa government. Nebu tipa, nebu lipa mu company zi zinu uloku wezi wa de license. Chiba chukula chavu liaza amanya na chukula chavu, chavu talibu enkanya. Nti gwenga gwe government obo otide nga ate wakati mkusaini nga zibai latozi. Waitula ne government ne government zeza atula. Nga company zizi noteziri waza jaluvanyuma ne zibeda wanti zezi no kutuala on behalf of the government. Na yate wadida newe kweka munodida obufuna nizwa woku londola nobutika no company zate. Guwaba we kwese mchimpi chino. Kati we mburi zaba kula bani mu ministry ya agenda andireba. Ndi muamuli mwagwa muenga ministry muli mochi mchimpi chino. Jesti kukiri ya ringa na kuwala isi nsi. Atebe mmalabe mwamuziwa jaka abama company. Yewe mba nga mwamuziwa jeko. Ania irresponsible kubana abaita mu company zezo. Ya nga. kakati mulo oza nti ababana na abaita mu company zezo before ani abavunanyizibwako kifana nti che musiga wakati yao mwagala kugeza ko kulaga nti no 
temuli babi ali bakama bamwe bali be mwasa ininga na benda gano kuba tuchimanyi bulungi inti be baba be mwasa ininga na benda gano be bakama bamwe baba sasula namwe company zolo kuba anti mwali mwagala business za mwestambule ne mukirizo musala bo gwa government ne mugwetika kakati ategudde gubalega olo kuba nga be mwatwa laye be mwatunda mu bawala bubakaba kati atayi baba suspending nga hena mu mukaba na yenga gwali mululu baba ziba katambala ku maso lo kuba mwali mwagala okuisa ochi lye cha business ne mukirizo vuna nziwo utalibwa Diaspora link imbala msizako mwebale kutuweleza amanya Fatuma Abdu nze bane government nja kujinenya ku nsonge eno jevayo nebanga yebuzabuza nayo ku nsonga yo kugama anti ne suspending companies ezibazi tutaba na banku bacheyo obana okusosola mawanga kati abana Kenya na abana Uganda na abatanzania twegatiddwa ku Kongo we are one ne passport ziri nti East Africa twasaze we Uganda ne tujjawo passport ezaba na Uganda ne tusalawo nti no ziri East Africa ne yo muntu kastokera ku macha no banga guwa fulumye teka ati no malane we fulira banno nze nti labango okwebuzabuza muri bali banguzi ate muri bali azamanya government chekoze si chabwe enkanya okuvaya ne suspendinga ama companies ge Kenya nga nabana aba na Uganda bandi abantu ala ne companies eze ezaba na Kenya Abana Kenya tuli chimu yesonga lwachi mwasala one mugamba anti no tuina kozza kati passport ya East Africa eza Uganda zifisidwa mwagala abana be batwala ani agendo okubala biranga mwe mwe nyini mwavayo ne musala one mugamba nti company etwalo omwana yeri no kumulondola ne mwejja mu mulimu gwamwe ne mubinika company emirimu ejo kati mu suspending mu suspending ya yuwa ya abana ani agendo okubalondola Government nsaba mu demo line mwava yo ne mtu koto gera finga ba nkuba cheyo ngare twina dogozi ya kweyo gerera kati mwe mwe fula njagala ambabuze omuli muguno mugulondola sawa meka abana bana abateke bwayo ngate mu maina kumanya abana abateke bwayo ba mala ko contract yo bate bamalanga ko bari ni uwingo bate bari ni uwinga kati wa company ya muvunanwa ko suspendinze tukole tutia abali ku mawanga era abaitira mu company ze za abatali bana Uganda Das Prarint amanya mwebo za Alice Riyad Saudi Arabia tuanze kutoeleza uh, kumulamu angenda kugamba bwenti ama uh, companies okubera nga bagaje ko license si kitofu oronso nganti zatwala ya bana ate abachali yonti tebana vayo batekedde okubera nga je bali nga bali ko kwa sinzira nti naita mu company gundi ne kiralo wa company bo vayo nawe ne we kala kasa nti bakuje ko vunanzi bo kubera ngo londola abana be watwalayo amazima gali nti company nga go wa company tosobola kulondola mwana go twa de ovunanzi bo bo si bubongo wa company ovunanzi bo bulina kusigala na government Eshinto chino chile medo kutegera saidi ni saidi Owa kampuni sava ufuna nzi wubu kubira nga waku likiru mwa ganya Kukubira nga utambu za wantubu Na yubu gambanti oya galulu ndule nibu tute Echo techigenda suvu kalu ansunga nti Muli banafu kweye nsunga Awantu bali baba wa senti Muli na senti zimufu nukubira nga mutambu za abana ngate muzifuna mu bantu bemu abana tebugenda kera ku macha wa kampuno yimirote kewe mbere ngumu okuberanga ofosinga omuntu gwe wajja ko sente okumu omwana okuberanga atereza mu mbere na abateli kutambula bulunji tekigenda soboko lwe sente zirizo ba watwala so munsonge eno Muli omu azanye pati jali no kuzanya government zanya pati yo kulondola muna Uganda ne company sigaza pati yo kubera nganti oli kubo muna Uganda mwai to gendo funo mulimu oba mwai to gendo kola government esigalenge tulondola nga bankuba sheyo company musigalewo nga muli kubo Okay. Mwetu itiro kugendo kola Na yote mugenda sufula kwa saganya vunanzi wa mbona Mwa batu tuwala, mwa batu londola Mwa batu So, echi ntu chuno Mbuli pati esigaze Uwe lino kuwe rangi sigala 
Okay, thank you for all those views. Uh, hopefully, Mr. Dalla, for the years that he spent in Uganda and he has worked in Uganda, he can be able to hear some little Uganda. Yes, but uh, uh, those people, our viewers, those are their comments, and we are saying that government can't negate its duty of supervision. It, even if it suspends people, it has to still continue to supervise the people that are out there. Uh, we also had Fatuma Abdallah, who is saying that, why fail Kenyans? Why would you fail a Kenyan company, yet we are all members of the East African Yes, hello. Community. Yes, we have a caller. Yes, my name is Norman. Sorry, I almost missed calling him. I have uh, like three questions in particular to Mr. Moses from Nairobi. Yes, hopefully time One, will allow us. I want to find yes, I want to find out from him. He said that he, they, they are always required to pay thirty dollars per person and twenty thousand regarding the currency. My question is, what is that money meant for? Hmm? Uh, mm. Again, in the very question, does the government play some role? for it to qualify, to ask for the mentioned amounts of money. Second question, has he tried, why, why, why didn't he try to sue or file his case in uh, East African Court of Justice, given the bias that, as per what he says, it's like Uganda is really biased, given the bias that seems to be in either judiciary or Ugandan government, and definitely given the corruption in Ugandan uh, judiciary, why doesn't he also run to East African Court of Justice? To sort out his concerns. Finally, is it possible for him to avail some of the proof, uh, either which is documented, uh, for us to also do some advocacy in Uganda here as the uh, good citizens of East Africa? Otherwise, we are being abused, and the East African community is being abused by such greedy people. If you followed his discussion, as he said, that the commission attempts you to, uh, to give him money or even give out 50. One percent shares. This is so shameful for this um, for this country yes. and East Africa. Yes. As, yes. Thank, as, you. As, um, Thank you, Mr. Norman. Block. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Adala. I think you've heard and. Uh, since the feedback is coming to you, I would give you these two minutes to really respond and and say bye to the people. Please do. Okay. Uh, whatever all I'm talking about is documented. Uh, I wouldn't want to actually to 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 create any issue that can uh, raise to the the media house that we are hosting now we are using now <laughs> secondly uh he has asked me about the east african community before you go to to arusha the the first question that they will ask you have you uh, uh, have you tried to complete the local remedies and uh, that's the i am into in the event that uh, i don't get justice in uh, the local court uh, i promise I'm, I'm heading to the east african court mm. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many years it will be, 20, I will stay in 20 with this case to help not only competitive but to any company that wants to do business in East Africa. Yes, the $30 per person, what is it meant for? Okay, the $30, I, I, I would say that it's a... Uh, they call it in Uganda. They always say that it's for uh, mobilization or something, but uh, it's not justifiable because one, uh, it, this money is not uh, receipted. You man, any money which is just you pay and you, you are not given a receipt, that uh, it, it amounts to corruption. Because if that was uh, the money that was supposed to help any anybody who is the, in Saudi Arabia or the, the, uh, the private sectors which are in Saudi Arabia to handle the issues of uh, Uganda, it would mm. be, it would be uh, sent to the bank, like what we do in Tanzania. In Tanzania, you pay 120,000 for the welfare of people who are abroad. The, that money is used to go and check on the people the air ticket for, for, for government officials, that's the money they are using. But here, we are paying $30, uh, $30 per person to, 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 for, for no use. I would say that. Okay. Thank it's, you. Thank you, Mr. Dalla. It cannot Dalla. be explained what, what, what this $30 is used for. 
Okay, thank you, and uh, we really appreciate you for taking off time and joining us. I uh, would request you to give us your parting shot as we leave. <coughs> okay, me, my request is um, the government should do. Uh, we should look at uh, the, the external uh, externalization of labor as something which is very vital. These are human beings that we are sending outside there. The policies that they create should be a policy that helps them to grow, not a policy that makes them to suffer outside there. I would prefer that even the training of the training that we the, the government introduced to give the girls. Actually, it's not the best training that the girls are going through. Five, you get a, 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 a girl from Kayunga in the village there who has never used the machine. Where we are taking these girls are, are more active. You cannot tell me that you can teach uh, how to, this girl to use a hoover, uh, mm. to use a washing machine, to use even modern toilets within five days. Okay, it's okay. Practically, it's not impossible. Thank you, Mr. Dala. Thank you for really taking off time. And we promise that we shall always get back to you because we understand you are so resourceful and you have a lot of information. Thank you for that wonderful time. Yes, Mr. Kayonde, I'm giving you one minute to say something to what you One had. minute, I want to thank you, Mr. Dala, yes. for really uh, standing out. Mm. On behalf of others, there's so many who are quiet there. Mm. I know there are many directors of companies who are quiet, but Adala is one in, amongst them. Mm. Uh, please continue. And I want to call upon the migrant workers mm. to also get ready as we are preparing. It is our time to shine. As you see the wolves, I mean the foxes fighting, fighting, arguing with the lions and mm. the tigers. Why, 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 why are you taking a big part? Why, 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 why? Mm. Then you get to take the right position, you know, to also see where you can survive it mm. is now our time to tell these guys mm. stop fighting for what is not yours mm. these mm. guys they may look to be like how they are adala has a point mm. but why mm. is reaching this level in one way that's why i gave him 99 percent the mm. other one percent mm. he does not in himself i know mm. and he can challenge me mm. uh, he does not recognize that the migrant worker from Uganda, mm. he's supposed to be employed in Saudi Arabia and also be observed on through the labor, international labor standards. Mm. They assume these workers are going to be uh, uh, protected under their assumptions in their heads. They wake up in a day and they say, maybe we are going to put such and such arrangement and then we shall be taking the girls like this, like how they are assuming. But okay. for us, we want to go by the standards which okay. protect us from even another jurisdiction when you are not there. Mm. If you do not give us those liberties mm. to speak for ourselves, to represent ourselves, even in being part of the tripartite structure, mm. where you, you, you manipulated it and where we are supposed to be, you had to put there your wearer. Oh, we okay. wonder now, <laughs> in, in which way yeah. can you be using brokers to represent workers? Workers must represent themselves, like Adela said, that we have to be there oh, okay. in order to be protected. Okay. Tuwe yanziza mwe bale nyo awalabi bafe. Bwe bitu ibeira waneno ku alternative digitalk. Bwe uh, tuwe tuweira mprogram ya fe. Diaspora link. Bigwa biocha. Mwe baza Alice. Na wetuwe yanzizo wakabuo. Mwe yongere okubanga mkomenti nga kumulama guneno. Mukama abatuwe romukisa. Na tera kuruna koludako. Tusigaleo waneno ku alternative digitalk. Real issues. Real talk. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.